Med History The Story of Freddie Mercury's Death Just four years after he was diagnosed with AIDS, Freddie Mercury died on November 24, 1991, at his home in London at the age of 45. Freddie Mercury told reporters late on Friday evening, November 22, 1991, that he had been diagnosed with AIDS. It was published in the newspapers on Saturday morning. Then on Sunday evening, Freddie Mercury, 45, died at his home in Kensington, London. AIDS is a stage of a chronic infectious disease caused by the human immunodeficiency virus. The manifestations of the disease are caused by a progressive decrease in the body's immune forces, are often generalized in nature, and are caused by conditionally pathogenic flora. The diagnosis of AIDS is aimed at determining the presence and amount of HIV in human blood, antibodies to the virus, and the number of immunocompetent cells. Treatment is aimed at suppressing the reproduction of the pathogen with the help of etiotropic antiviral agents, the elimination of microorganisms that provoke secondary pathologies, fungi, bacteria, viruses, and others. For many years, mercury has been involved in romantic relationships with men and women, which has led to speculation about his orientation. The singer of the band Queen kept everyone about his personal life a secret and focused on his work, avoiding rumors. However, his statement in 1991 was the first evidence that his public reputation had been hidden. Despite the fact that Mercury's last photos, in which he looked noticeably thinner, and rumors that he had been suffering from AIDS since 1986, few people close to him knew that his life was coming to an end. Besides, they didn't know how painful the last days of his life were. Mercury's death has sparked heated discussions about health care and stigma in the LGBT community at the height of the HIV pandemic AIDS. His reputation as an LGBT performer and icon has strengthened his determination to live openly and sincerely. How did Freddie Mercury die? It takes years, sometimes decades, from the moment of HIV infection to the first signs of AIDS. When symptoms of a secondary infection appear, the patient's well-being begins to suffer. One of the most common complaints is a constant increase in body temperature. Fever can be accompanied by night sweats, terrific chills, hallucinations, and delirium, and it varies widely. Kaposi's sarcoma is a condition in which painless cyanotic purple nodes are found on the skin of the lower extremities, face, and gum mucosa. In AIDS, candidiasis infections cause lesions of the skin and mucous membranes which manifest themselves as white curd deposits on the tongue, palate, inner cheeks, and genitals. Difficulty swallowing, burning in the mouth, chest pain, and a feeling of lump in the throat are all possible symptoms. Vesicles or pigmented traces of shingles, a condition in which severe pain occurs, vesicular rashes along the nerves, intercostal space, face, limbs, are often determined. As Farouk Bulsari was born on September 5, 1946, in Zanzibar, Freddie Mercury became a music icon. Although Mercury was born into a Parsi family and professed the Zoroastrian faith, he went to boarding school in India very early, where he studied according to more traditional Western programs. Mercury returned to Zanzibar after school to be closer to his family. He and his family were forced to flee during the Zanzibar Revolution at the age of 18 to escape violence. They eventually settled in Middlesex, England. In 1970, Mercury, along with Brian May and Roger Taylor, formed the band Queen, which allowed him to become a more famous musician. Mercury spent years studying and practicing music, and soon his efforts paid off with many international hits. Mercury's theatrical voice has been included in songs such as Bohemian Rhapsody, Killer Queen, and Crazy Little Thing Called Love. As a result of these and many other hits, Queen has attracted international attention. But soon his personal life became a tabloid topic, and it remained so until his death. The human immunodeficiency virus, also known as HIV, is a retrovirus. It can be found in blood, saliva, cerebrospinal fluid, vaginal secretions, ejaculate, tears, breast milk, and sweat in various concentrations. HIV is transmitted through an infected biological environment into the body of a healthy person or through sexual contact intravenous drug administration. With repeated use of non-sterile medical instruments, transfusion of blood and its components, tattooing and piercing, the virus can spread.
The causative agents of the clinical manifestations of AIDS, in addition to retrovirus, can be various bacteria, viruses, protozoa, fungi, and even helminths. The conditionally pathogenic human flora consists of a large number of microorganisms. HIV patients who suffer from a long-term illness more than five years. Without treatment, injecting drug users, pregnant women, and people living in unfavorable sanitary and hygienic conditions are at risk for the development of secondary infections. Freddie Mercury died in 1982 in New York. He had a tongue lesion that could be an early sign of HIV. In 1986, the British media reported that Mercury had undergone a blood test in Westminster. In April 1987, the diagnosis was officially confirmed. Mercury began to appear less frequently in public. On February 18, 1990, he took the stage for the last time with the band Queen to accept the Brit Award. His appearance attracted the attention of the press. The performer looked very thin. He sometimes looked weak, especially for a man who is well known for his flamboyant stage presence. He reunited with Mary Austin after recording his last album with Queen in 1991. He returned to his home in Kensington. Freddie Mercury became very ill in November 1991. Just four days before his death, he asked to be carried to the ground floor of the house to take a last look at his art collection, The Mirror Reports. He weighed so little that it took one person to do the job. According to Jim Hutton's memoirs and reports from The Mirror on the same day, Mercury left his bed on his own for the last time and went to the window to shout peekaboo to Hutton the gardener. At 8 p.m. on Friday, November 22, 1991, realizing that the end was approaching, he made a public statement about his condition, which was published in the newspapers the next day. According to Hutton's memoirs, he stayed with Mercury that night, slept next to him on the bed, and sometimes squeezed his hand. In case his fingers swelled up after death and they couldn't take it off, friends wanted to take back the engagement ring that Hutton had given him. Mercury, on the other hand, insisted on wearing it to the end. He was cremated with him. On Sunday morning, Hutton took Mercury to the bathroom. However, he heard a deafening crash when he returned him to bed. It sounded like one of Freddy's bones had broken, cracked like a tree branch, Hutton said. He screamed and convulsed in pain. Eventually, the doctor prescribed morphine to calm him down. Then, according to Jim Hutton's memoirs, Freddie Mercury died at 7.12 p.m. He looked happy. Hutton wrote, One minute he was a boy with a thin, sad face, and the next minute he was a picture of ecstasy. Freddie's face is back to what it used to be. He looked completely reassured. I was glad of my sadness to see him like this. I felt very relieved. I was sure that his suffering had stopped. The singer has always appreciated loneliness. Besides, the death of Freddie Mercury was no exception. He asked for compensation and to give Austin his ashes and part of the property. She did not say where he asked to have his ashes scattered. The prognosis of HIV infection depends on the timely diagnosis of opportunistic diseases and HIV infection. It is believed that the use of antiretroviral drugs helps to prevent the development of systemic infections. Tuberculosis of various localization is the cause of death in 50% of HIV-positive patients, and cerebral toxoplasmosis and pneumocystosis of the lungs in 17%, CMVI, in 15%, and visceral candidiasis in 13%. Other conditions account for fewer deaths. Patients are prescribed antiretroviral therapy within two weeks of the start of treatment for any opportunistic pathology with the exception of tuberculosis. Vaccines are being actively developed to prevent HIV infection. The high rate of virus mutations is the main problem of their synthesis. Nonspecific prevention includes following the rules of monogamy, avoiding unprotected sexual intercourse and drug use, as well as the use of condoms, the distribution of newsletters, leaflets, videos and clips on television, radio and other media is necessary, as well as the introduction of HIV-related training programs in educational institutions at all levels.